Hey guys, Pierre here from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to another fly tying tutorial. In the vise here, I've got a fly called the Ray Trolls. It's an excellent scud imitation. And a scud is basically a little freshwater crustacean. Trout love them and I reckon you should always have some of them in your fly box. This fly tying tutorial is brought to you by Vixen. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check the links in the video description for a full review on their new fly fishing waste pack. It has a removable foam sleeve so that you can store this fly and others that you'll learn to tie safely while you're out on the river. The tools you need to tie the Ray Charles is a vise, a bobbin holder for the thread, a whip finishing tool, a pair of scissors, head cement, a bodkin and a UV torch. In the vise I've got a curved shank hook. This is actually a clean camera hook but I like the curve and the size of the shank for this specific fly. You can use any curved shank hook that you like. You can also tie it on a straight shank hook. The specific hook that I've got here is a Moosh Fly Fishing 8430 in a size 14. You'll notice that I placed the hook in quite an odd position in the vise. The reason for that is I like to keep the eye of the hook as level as possible that when I finish the fly, the thread doesn't pop off the whole time. The thread that I'm using is Danville 70 Denier Fly Master 60 Waxed in the color fluorescent orange. I attach the thread to the hook just behind the eye and with a couple of locking wraps, I secure the thread. I then, then cut off the excess and I flatten the thread as always. Now I like to run the thread back, open it every now and then just to create a nice solid thread base for our materials to sit on. So run all the way back to about a point there. So you can use a wide variety of materials for the scud back. Um, the material that I'm using is a hens product. It's a hens shell back in the color 01. The shell back will fold over the back of the fly and just create a nice scud-like profile and look to the fly. I place the shell back right behind at the back of the at the back of the hook and I then secure it first with one loose wrap and then I tighten the wraps just like that. Run just cover it. Then we're going to tie in the ostrich hole. I have one strand of ostrich hole that I plucked off a feather. And very much like hackle, we're going to strip off the fibers here at the base, just to give our thread something to butt into. Like so. Place the ostrich hole at the back of the body, where the fibers start where your thread base ended going to make one loose wrap and then wrap all the way back to secure the ostrich hole in place. Now you'll notice that I left the excess ostrich hole tip. I didn't cut it off. All that we're going to do is just cover that with our thread. That is just so that we don't have a step in the um, width or thickness of the body run my thread all the way forward and right here behind the eye you can make a half hitch if you've got a rotary vise we're going to use the rotary vise to wind the um, ostrich hole on otherwise you can also do it um, by twisting it around the, the hook instead of twisting the um, the moving the um, the rotary vise around so what we're doing now is just hold the ostrich hole in place and then you'll see I just use the rotary function of the vise to wrap the hole. Now what I like about the um, color of the thread is that even though some of it is exposed it's actually a good thing because it just creates depth to the fly and it looks like there's a little egg sac in there as well. So 
So you'll just see how much quicker it goes when you use a rotary device. So I'll make, wrap the thread up to there, or wrap the ostrich hole up to there, and then I take my bobbin rest out of the way, and I secure the ostrich hole. Cut off the excess with a pair of scissors, and pull back any forward facing fibers and just tidy up the head section. Before we fold over the scud back, we just wet your fingers and just split the fibers like so. You'll see with this ostrich hole, it actually works very nicely. Now you take the scud back material and fold it over. secure it in place. Don't cut off this excess yet. Pull it back and form a neat head right there behind the eye of the hook. The reason why we fold it back and double the thread over it again is that the many scud back materials are very slippery and if you catch a couple of trout or fish uh, the material actually pops out so when you do that um, fold it over it um, prevents it from happening now the tying is almost done all that we need to do is a little whip finish cut off the thread like so. so that's all the tying done all that's left to do is build a little bit of a back or translucent back over the scud back material. Now I take some Solaris or any UV resin for that matter and I just put quite a lot of it on the back of the fly. Also on the head. Just like that, a little bit more here in the middle. Like that and remember to close your UV resin bottle before you store it away. Now just tidy it up with a bodkin if you've got any. If you've got an uneven body, just want to wrap it around a little bit, spread it around, and then take your UV torch and just zap it with your UV torch. Depending on the um, UV resin you have, it may take a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes. After it's cured a little bit, I'll turn it around just to cure the bottom of the head, which is very important. And there you have it, the completed Ray Charles Scud Fly. I hope that you found this uh, fly tying tutorial interesting. Please share it with your fellow anglers or friends. Leave any comments or questions or suggestions at the bottom of the page. And please remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. Until next time, cheers.